everybody. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day to um, join this webinar, and I certainly hope that you learn a little bit about uh, technology. So what am I talking about when I say smart technology and smart technology off the shelf? This is really the technology that exists already that you can go to Best Buy, uh, get on Amazon, that type of thing. So your smart devices, cell phones, iPads, security cameras, personal computer apps, or any kind of software. So that's what I'm really talking about and focused on um, today. So one of the things I just want to emphasize with the presentation today is, is that this is not about endorsing any type of technology or software. It really is about just sharing what has worked for me as a caregiver, what has worked for other caregivers uh, that were involved in the study that I did. And so it really is exploring what you might uh, think might be helpful for you in your situation. And um, I started um, looking at technology a, a number of years ago, what was out. And honestly, I started because my husband is, I want to call him a little computer geek. It's like his hobby. And about five years ago, he got Google Home Hub. And he started uh, putting all of these smart devices into our homes, like lights turning off, lights turning on. Uh, the back door opening and closing because the kids wouldn't close the door and it would be open all day. And so really uh, at, at about the same time as he was exploring those things, my mom's health was starting to decline. And I immediately went to, hmm, you know what? This would be really good for my mom. Like we should try doing these things. And so that's kind of how I started personally uh, exploring a few different devices with respect to my mom who lives independently by herself. And so that was sort of the beginning of my path. And then um, as well as in amongst that time, I also wanted to look into exploring and understanding what other caregivers might be using. And so that actually led me into doing uh, some formal research on the topic. And so uh, with my colleagues uh, through Brock University, Sheila, Jen, and Karen, uh, last year we um, developed a research project and it really was exploring caregivers and what their use of in these, the smart technology off the shelf, how are they using it, it was very open, um, had a great response, um, wonderful participants, and really in the analysis, we discovered four major themes that came out. And so caregivers um, are looking at things that can help them keep their loved ones safe, keep their loved ones staying independent, uh, stimulation and socialization. Now I'd like to point out here that the focus of my research was in caring for an older adult living independently in the community. However, um, I know there's such a diverse uh, group of caregivers out there. And so I beg you to sort of consider how these might help you in your role based upon your situation. And I know that these four key concepts are very important to us as caregivers. It doesn't matter who we're caring for. So hopefully you can sort of look at it within that particular perspective. So I'm going to share each of these concepts with you and some of the smart technology that can actually be utilized in those four concepts. Um, so the first one is staying safe. Before I get started on that, those of you who are on video, I just wanted to point out, you'll see on the screen that the text is either in black or in blue. And so I wanted to point out that the black text is text that I haven't necessarily used myself or I haven't heard caregivers use, but have sort of explored it, whether it was looking at literature or reading it on the internet or something like that, versus the blue text are actually stories that I can share with you that either I'm using or I've heard other caregivers are using. And so that's why there's the different colored text. And so certainly looking at staying safe, there's a number of different items that are available out there. And I think one of the biggest things to consider is the fact that all of these items that are out there tend to be marketed towards 
um, you know, uh, socialization. It's marketed to the younger generation or mid age, and it's about fun and entertainment. And so really what I've done is looked at those particular devices from a lens of safety, providing socialization, staying independent and um, stimulation. And so security cameras is one of the first ones that comes out that we want our family to be safe and a lot of people are using those. So there's things like Nest Cam, which uh, you can have security um, cameras on the inside or the outside. We started using that a number of years ago when we knew the kids would be coming home after school and we'd be at work. And I just didn't feel comfortable not knowing what was going on. So we actually put in these security cameras that actually allowed us to talk to the children when they got home and so we could see them. And so that was really helpful uh, to keep that staying safe. Currently, well, last year, we put uh, one of these cameras into my mother-in-law's home. And so then when she goes out grocery shopping, she can always have a look at my father-in-law just to make sure he's safe. So it's a peace of mind that it sort of provided. Um, the other great device, which is really super easy, and I heard from another caregiver, is the uh, a baby monitor. So if you're upstairs and downstairs type thing, a baby monitor with camera provides you with that ability to sort of know what's going on. There, um, there's also, you may have heard of Google Home or Alexa. These are really home hubs. So they're devices that you can actually link other smart home devices into. So we have one, I got one for my mom. Um, she absolutely loves it, got one for my mother-in-law. And we'll talk about how, yes, it can provide safety, but the same device can provide an opportunity for stimulation um, and that type of thing. Um, the one that we have is hooked up to a door sensor, as I mentioned, so if the back door opens and it's open for too long, we have a light that goes off upstairs so we know that that door um, is enclosed. Um, other things that you can get are automatic door locks. So we put an automatic door lock on my mom and um, it's actually linked to my phone. So if she forgot her keys and can't get in the house or any of those other reasons, I can actually unlock the door or I can lock the door at night if I see that she hasn't locked the door before she goes to bed. There's some very simple devices uh, that uh, can turn your lights on and off. Um, sort of looking at considering when you want to light on in the middle of the night, just in the bathroom and those types of things for safety when they're moving. I just read that Apple has a falls watch. Didn't even know they had that, but was reading up on that. Um, one of the newer devices that's out right now is the doorbell camera. So NAS makes this doorbell camera. And I just heard a story from a caregiver how they were just talking about how wonderful this device has been for their mother who uh, their dad had recently passed away and she had never lived on her own. She'd been, uh, you know, living with somebody all her life and now she was alone. And so this camera um, that's hooked up to the doorbell allows her to see who comes to the door and it's just making her feel so much more comfortable and safe. There's a number of other items that you can consider for tracking devices. Our cell phones all have a tracking device, so if your loved one has a cell phone, you can do that. There's many um, different kinds of medical alerts. Some of you may have you know, heard of Lifeline, so that's another particular option. Um, I recently just found this website that's called Finding Your Way Ontario. And uh, this website you can go to and actually provides information. This is just a screenshot of the website. It provides a lot of information about some of the different devices that are available that are out there that might be helpful for you that you can consider um, by looking at them. So I'd like to get um, some input from you um, and just ask you, have you considered any of these devices looking at staying safe? Have you used some of them? Have they worked? Is there any challenges? any recommendations. So I'm just going to leave it open for just 30 seconds here and see if I can get you to type it into the chat or please feel free um, to share. We got some, I'd like to try the security camera. 
Um, somebody else has a falls watch, but importantly, she has dementia. So often when she falls, she forgets. That is certainly a, a challenge. Um, we'll talk about some challenges later as well. Um, somebody mentioned they're using Lifeline and love it. So that's great feedback to hear. And the GPS tracking on the phone. Thanks for sharing. This is great. Project Lifesaver bracelet is another comment. Um, and apparently it's in a region which involves local police search department. I've never heard of that one. That's amazing to hear about. Excellent, thanks. So one of the things that I just want to add here is, is that um, part of my goal is to, again, um, sort of support the awareness and hear what other caregivers are giving because I know, again, every situation is different and, and certainly we'll talk about some challenges later on, but it's really about this this community of conversations of caregivers going, well, what worked? What hasn't worked? What was the issues? And let's try this or let's try that. And that was a real theme that came through my research as well, is, is that there is unfortunately not one true whole uh, technology or sources that help, but it's about exploring what helps to ease some of your concerns and some of your anxieties that you have. So looking at some items that would help keeping your loved one staying independent. We already mentioned um, the, the, um, the cell phones that could do GPS um, tracking, but there's also reminders on those phones. And certainly your home hub like the Google Home uh, can actually be um, programmed so that you can remind, it'll come on, it'll remind uh, your loved one of the day, the time, you can ask even what's going on today and it'll remind them, oh, you have a, you know, an appointment with the doctor at 1 p.m. So those options are extremely helpful. There are electronic medical dispensers, and I just heard this from a dear friend of mine who's looking after her mom, where uh, memory has become a real issue and she has those bubble packs, but unfortunately they've become a bit of challenge with respect to the, the timing. And so she's purchased this live fine automatic bluetooth pill dispenser she did have to set it up she said it was really easy she just googled it on youtube uh, to program it and she is absolutely loving it and her mom is finding it super easy to use and it's like a um, just it's such a wonderful relief for her um, because again she lives a distance away so she can't be there to watch her mom and, and help her mom with medication so that's been extremely helpful for her there's another device that i just learned it's called smart dot automatic and there's a picture down there in the right hand corner and this is a smart plug you just plug this into your wall and it shows up on uh, an app on your phone and then you can program it to anything, whether it's a light switch or a fan or to the TV. Uh, again, those types of things might be, okay, turn this lamp on at two o'clock in the morning because that's when it's really dark and my mom has to go to the bathroom. I was actually introduced to this through my daughter who wants her fan turned on at two o'clock in the morning because that's when her apartment or her uh, residence gets really hot. And so she doesn't want to have to get out of bed. So again, it's about that that mindset of just kind of considering when you hear about these things, go, hmm, you know, how could I use this to help my loved one stay independent? And so super easy. Um, if she's able to do it, she's not tech savvy, then it's a very easy device to use. Um, the other one that um, is extremely helpful is, helpful is the Ecobee Smart Thermostat. We have that at our home. We have that at my mom's. And again, it's just some of those little things where she just forgets or she's not sure. And she'll call me up and go, I don't know why it's so cold in here. And I'm able to go onto this app on my phone and just increase the temperature in her house without having to, to run over to her place all the time. Uh, for individuals who have loved ones that are dealing with dementia, I actually just discovered this um, um, app that's called Data Day. It's actually a daily support app for people with dementia. And um, this particular app was, uh, I think it's just recently created. 
And the app itself actually helps to track cognition, foods eaten, moods, physical activity, that type of thing, I believe. Yeah, there's a nice picture of the screen there down in the left-hand corner. Um, you can see that the icons are larger and apparently with some mild dementia, it is actually easy to use. Um, and sort of helps with some of the stained and dependent concepts. Just back to the previous screen, one of the things I wanted to point out, because sometimes we don't think about it, sometimes our loved ones are using um, their personal computers quite easily, but they don't know that there's a speech to text option and they don't know that there can be an enlarged icon. And this was really amazing for my mom because she loves to use the computer for whatever it is she's doing. And so I just changed those settings for her and it just made a huge difference for ease of access and ease of using. So something else to just consider and think about. Um, shared Google Calendar is another one. Uh, I have, uh, my mom and I both have access to the same shared Google Calendar so I can put things in there. Where I find it extremely helpful is, is I can actually block off my work schedule so that when she goes onto the calendar, she knows she you're not going to get an answer if you try calling from here to here or I'm out of the house at this time. Um, and it, so it's just some small reminders for her so that she doesn't call me 10 times a day at a certain time when I'm in fact busy and I can't answer back. Um, shared online grocery shopping list. Um, this became really uh, helpful, certainly during COVID, especially when we were in lockdown. Um, some of you may sort of had to, uh, you know, explore that route uh, because of our limited ability to go out. And I certainly didn't want my mom to go out. And so I created her account and we have the same account. And so we could actually talk on the phone and work through that shopping list. And where it became helpful was, is if I was going shopping, I could say, oh, mom, I see you have bread on your list. I'm going to take it off because I'll purchase you some bread and we'll just drop it off in a box outside your door kind of thing. And so it was really handy to actually look at that. Um, some other items that I haven't necessarily used, but certainly there's iWatch and Fitbit, which helps to you know, monitor health and encourage activity. Uh, there's um, items that are called Kyle Finder, and they are devices that you can put on um, their keys or other small things that can help you find items that are often uh, missing. Um, the one thing that I never even thought about, but a caregiver shared is uh, the Harmony remote for TVs. And I'm just gonna jump forward so you can have a look at this. This is just, again, a clip of the website. And um, this particular remote control, he had hooked up to his phone at home. And so when his dad would call, I can't turn on the TV again and I can't change the station, he was actually able to do this by his phone. And so I didn't know it existed. So I'm gonna start playing around and considering that with my mom because I get a lot of those phone calls as well. Um, so great option to sort of consider. Um, the other um, site that I'd like to share with you, which is really um, more related to the older adult um, aging well independently in their home, it's called the McMaster Optimal Aging Portal. So I have the website there and just want to pull up what the website looks like. This is a group of um, expert researchers at McMaster and their entire focus is translating and disseminating best practices and research that's out there and bringing it down into a language that can be understood by the layperson. And so they provide the best evidence and little snippets about, you know, did you know if you exercise five times a day, it will do X and, and those types of things. So if you do have an older adult that you're caring for, I would encourage you to either join this site yourself because I get a lot of information through them that I can then share with my mom or encourage your, um, your care recipient to look themselves and get some of those little newsletters that come up. Uh, with respect to what things can be helpful to keep you independent. So again, just a quick question off to the audience. Um, have you considered using any of those devices that I talked about um, with respect to staying independent? 
Is there anything else that I didn't address that might be helpful for the rest of the audience to know? He said, TV remote would be great. Absolutely. Does it work from Canada to a relative in Europe? I have no idea. Um, I haven't used it myself, but the website certainly has a lot of information on it. So you probably could go there and actually send in that chat to them and ask that particular question because that's a great question. All right, so not, not too many comments in that one, but we can certainly have a look at some of the, uh, the feedback um, as I move along. I'm going to be moving on to looking at stimulation and socialization. Okay, so stimulation. So this is really around um, anything that would keep their minds going, keep their minds thinking um, and doing different things. And uh, the first thought that's on my list is an iPad. And so just to share you the story with respect to the iPad, my um, a friend of mine was getting rid of her second generation iPad and she didn't know what to do with it. And so I was like, well, you know what, I'll bring it to my mom and I'll set it up. Now, obviously, because it was older, it, it wasn't as fast and didn't have a lot of options in it because you couldn't download any new games and et cetera. But what it did have was FaceTime. And this became huge for my mom um, to talk to her great grandchildren and her grandchildren and her son and her brother that all live on the other side of the um, of Canada and and she just loved it and now she basically uses it and FaceTimes her granddaughter who's in Ottawa every week and so it was a device that she just absolutely adored and so when um, COVID hit and she became even more isolated, um, I encouraged her to purchase a new one. And I'm telling you, the money spent, she loves it. So now we can look at ebooks. So she's a great reader, couldn't go to the library. And so she's um, now hooked up to the, the, the library here, which offers uh, free ebooks and she can't put the thing down. She absolutely loves it. She's watching her movies and Netflix on it. Um, obviously, um, the iPad is good or the PC is good for Facebook. I heard a lot from caregivers about, oh, you know what, I set my dad up on Facebook and he looks at his news every day and he loves the facts that he gets friends and, and those types of things. So I think what, what became really clear here is, is that even though we may think that our care recipient would not approve or feel comfortable with technology or don't think that it would work, when we can explore it, and it's not until we explore it that we find out and go, oh, you know what? I never thought of it. Um, one of the caregivers in our study made that exact same comment, um, caring for her, her brother, going, ah, you know, the PSW wanted to get him a, an iPad. And I thought, well, that seems like a waste of money, but okay. And now she's like, he loves it. Like you just can't go anywhere without it. And so some of the things is just more, you know, take baby steps, exploring, thinking, trying, those types of things. There is a fair amount of literature that is coming out now with respect to stimulating the brain with simple games that just keeps that brain moving. So some of them, um, whack-a-mole, that's a coordination and hand game. And so again, on the iPad, you have to sort of, you know, punch on the, the 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 mold that comes up bejeweled's another one uh wordscape is another one i introduced my mom on her ipad and again she just loves this game and it's about making them just think differently it's about making them explore something that they is not routine of uh, their every day um considering the week console for exercising and moving um, I also got my mom onto YouTube chair yoga, which is specifically for older adults with arthritis or some physical ability, just to get her to move around, even if it's once a week. I go, hey, have you done your chair yoga lately? That type of thing. The um, other um, app that I just found um, in doing my research is called uh, Marlena Books. And so I'm just going to share a screenshot of that particular website. 
And this particular website was actually created based upon um, Marlena having a loved one who was starting to um, have some memory loss and into dementia. And so this entire site is built with uh, eBooks that are dementia friendly eBooks. So I haven't explored it yet. I haven't had to do that, but I am certainly keeping it in my back pocket as my mom ages, but please have a look at this and see if this is um, something that you might want to consider. And again, just out to you for a couple of seconds. Um, is there any other devices that you would recommend that you can think of that you've used with your care recipient around stimulating the brain and just um, trying to get some synaptic firing happening? And just to let you know, the um, feed that we do get back in the chat, um, we will make sure that uh, we can sort of include that because there's some great uh, feedback here. Um, a caregiver or sorry, an audience member was talking about the auto pill dispensers are also often offered by home care provider companies. I had no idea. Please explore that concept. Another one was uh, sharing senior center without walls program uh, around communities. There are about 85 in Ontario. Uh, the one in her area is called Good Companions. And it's a program through Zoom or by telephone. So something else to explore. Thank you so much for sharing. iPad for sure, YouTube channels for attending church. Yes. Um, completely sort of forgot about that. Um, thank you for adding that because a number of um, parishes are offering. My mother-in-law is actually attending online. And so again, it's just trying to keep that stimulation going and thinking that, well, how do I do this? They've never used a you know, personal computer before or an iPad. Um, if you have an iPad at home, send it over for a little bit and see if they can navigate and see if they can use it and then they can enjoy some of this um, activity that they did pre-COVID that is now making them, uh, you know, so much more um, isolated. Okay, so looking at things like socialization, um, we've already mentioned, I've already mentioned some of these, Facebook and FaceTime, as I've said, uh, caregivers have talked about setting up Facebook and talking about how their uh, their loved one is just intrigued with um, I'm actually not a Facebook user myself so I can't speak to it but certainly a lot of caregivers who are this is a great opportunity for uh, their loved one just to stay connected and socialize with friends and um, other ways um, such as that FaceTime I just I love it I love it I love it um, having that ability um, to connect is just amazing. Certainly Skype, Zoom uh, is another option. Of course, we're using Zoom today and um, how we're using it now. And so, you know, there's, there's always some challenges along the way when I introduce my mom to the iPad. You know, every once in a while there'd be, well, I forgot or uh, one of the biggest challenges is they update and so then some of the icons move or they don't look good and so, um, I started having my granddaughter help her with the iPad. And when she went back to Ottawa, she would send her an invite in her email to Zoom. So then she could actually turn the iPad around so that my daughter could see the iPad and they can have this conversation. And then she was able to say, no, 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 grandma, go to the orange icon, hit the orange icon or, or give directions that way and sort of visually see it. And it was super easy for my mom because all she needed to do was click on the link that was in the email that was sent to her. So that's been um, just a blessing um, in our family and so something to consider. Um, cell phones um, have been very helpful for um, other caregivers. Uh, again, there is a text-to-speech option. I've sort of showed my mom how to use the text-to-speech both on her computer and on her iPad. Um, a lot of the times it's still reminding her, mom, look for the microphone. Um, so there are some prompts that need to be there, but sometimes it's, 
a way to connect. It's a way to have fun. It's a way to explore together. Um, some of the other things I've heard about is um, any kind of online card games. And so I just introduced my mom to uh, an online euchre game because she can't go to her regular card games with COVID. Um, also heard that there's an online bingo. So that might be an option uh, for you to consider um, doing that. And um, the other website that I was recently introduced to was called Huddle. And it's an um, online community to share wisdom or ask for guidance. Um, so just going to show you a screenshot of that particular website. Uh, I, I looked through it very, very quickly. Um, there actually is one coach in particular that is um, a counselor for caregivers. So this might be an option for you to explore or might be an option for your care recipient to explore with respect to socializing with others. And it's very much a supportive site as opposed to any kind of um, other kinds of sites. So it might be something for you uh, to consider. And again, I would ask that you to uh, maybe do a bit of sharing of have you used, can you think of anything else that would be supportive with respect to socialization? So I do have one question from uh, the audience about the iPad options. Does it allow you for only one or two icons to prevent confusion? And um, so just to let you know how my daughter dealt with that with my mom, because of course iPads come with all these preloaded icons that are useless to her, is she set it up where she made a folder and threw all of the non-using icons into, and basically said, don't touch. She labeled it as don't touch. And then the only icons that are actually on her main screen are the four that she uses all the time. So that's sort of how we worked around the option of just having only a few icons opposed to more. Um, I'm not sure uh, if there are other options, but um, that was sort of how we um, dealt with that. So there's a website that was provided Creation of assigned thinking, the community for all the continued support, residents individual contribute towards the creation of the sign. So there is a website there that um, would be helpful. Somebody else also um, provided a website for worldwide destinations and attractions, museums. Amazing. Again, I never thought about that because museums are certainly doing a lot of virtual tours musical activities, Bluetooth speaker, absolutely. Um, Sing-alongs, name that tune is another one. These are great, um, really great ideas. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and I will definitely try and, and sort of collate all of these so that we can again continue to build this tips that caregivers can look at. And it's really through your experience and our experience together that we find ways to help support our uh, caregiver role. So I appreciate all of the, all of this is excellent. So many, many more on there. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all of them. So um, we'll definitely find ways to, to get that back to you. So quickly, I wanted to sort of talk about um, some of the challenges and definitely what I've experienced and what we heard through the research that we did is really knowing what's available and just even based upon, you know, the feedback that you've provided and some insight in this small period of time, there are things out there, but the problem is, is they're not targeted at caregivers. So you can't go and go caregiver technology. Nothing tends to pop up in the billions of Google searches. And so that is a bit of a challenge to know what's available, where do you find it, who supports me in doing this? Um, I don't have all the answers to that yet. Um, some of those barriers still exist. And I believe it's really through building a community of caregivers who are using technologies and sharing our stories is 
how we can start bringing down some of the walls and using some existing technology to help support us in our caregiving duties. And sometimes it's just a peace of mind. That's it. So it's not going to fix all of our stressors, but just to have that relief um, just helps us uh, day to day continue in that particular role. Some of the advice that was provided um, by the caregivers that were in the study um, was to start slow. And um, so a couple of caregivers talked about, no, we just really started with a very simple flip phone. And we went with this simple flip phone for a year. Then once the loved one was getting comfortable with it, we, we built up to that smartphone. And so introducing some of those items very slowly, as opposed to forcing it, um, I think it's very important that we address it as, hey, this might be fun to explore. And that's really what I did with my mom. And then she just took such interest in it that now whatever I bring forward or whatever I talk about, she's like, well, that sounds fun. Um, so that even though from our lens, you know, we're looking at that staying safe, staying independent, stimulation, socialization um, to ease our stresses and concerns, we bring it as enjoyment. Hey, let's try this out. It sounds kind of fun. And that doesn't mean we haven't tried some things that were totally useless and I go, okay, mom, we need to delete that. That didn't work at all. Um, so try slowly and explore and explore it as fun. I would also encourage um, exploring it through um, getting engaged with whether it's grandchildren or great grandchildren, those types of individuals, because it helps to encourage socialization uh, with that generation. Um, I find it such a relief off of my shoulder that uh, my daughter is now sort of taking on the the iPad because then that's one less thing for me, and it gives them an opportunity to connect. So my granddaughter and my mom are connecting and, you know, it's not another job for me to do. And now she'll just say, oh, I did have a problem, but don't worry about it. I'm going to Zoom Rochelle later and ask her about it. And so just, you know, trying to sort of delegate some of that caregiving duty um, has been helpful. The one thing I did want to um, share with everybody as well is, is that there's certainly a lot of up and coming and new innovations that are, you know, still in the research, not necessarily at the market phase yet. But I would encourage you to sort of explore those. And again, this is, is focused you know, mainly on the older adults, but I like to believe that there's a lot of uh, up and coming innovative technology that would be helpful for any population of care recipient. It's just about how you think about it and how you know, think that it will be um, there to sort of support your role. But AgeWell is Canada's technology and aging network. So just showing you a clip here of AgeWell, it's a new, um, I guess, um, I believe it's federally funded organization of bringing together researchers, scientists, and um, all of that type of thing to look at some really um, new and innovative, you know, sensors in the house and all kinds of great things. Some of the things that I discovered were actually through them. And so I encourage you to explore their site. They really are focused on wanting to include caregivers and older adults. So um, if you're interested in participating in research projects, you can go there. What I do is I subscribe to the newsletter. And so then when I get the newsletter in, that's actually how I found out about the Marlena books because they were um, advertising and are not advertising. They were just sharing uh, one of the projects that they had helped to uh, financially support. So another option uh, for you. Thank you, Thank Maureen. You, Maureen.